Hi, hi everybody, and welcome. This is the Falco Maintenance Track. If you want to know what's going on on Falco, you are in the right place. Before we start, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Jason. Um, I'm an open source engineer at Sysdig and one of the core maintainers of Falco. And I am Leonardo Grasso. And guess what? I'm another <laughs> software engineer too, and I'm also a Falco core maintainer. You can find us on GitHub and also on Twitter. All the links are in the in the deck. Uh, we are both here on behalf of the Falco community to give you some updates about the Falco project. So let's start with the agenda. In this talk, we will give you a brief overview about what Falco is, and then we'll continue with the, the project updates from the last year until now. In the second part of the presentation, we will deep dive into the new amazing feature of Falco, the plugin system. We will also describe the plugin SDK and the plugin registry. Finally, we will conclude the presentation with uh, a preview of future development. Let's start. OK, uh, let's get to work. Maybe you are familiar with Falco, or maybe it's the first time you heard about it. So I'm going to give a brief review uh, for everyone to, to be in pair. Uh, Falco is a cloud-native runtime security tool that monitors everything that happens in your system and sends security alerts whenever something suspicious or a cyber attack uh, is detected. Falco is pretty easy to deploy and configure and catches cyber attacks uh, right in the moment they happen so that you can take immediate action. Uh, that's why we love Falco so much and why it's uh, acknowledged as a de facto standard for uh, Kubernetes and cloud-native environments. Sounds cool, but uh, how does that all work in practice? Um, Falco is designed to consume a stream of events, uh, extract information from them, and then send you alerts whenever something bad is detected. Data flows only in one direction and uh, is not retained or stored everywhere. Everything happens in real time following the activity of your system. The core data source Falco is able to consume is system calls. Uh, System calls tell you a lot about what's going on in your system. Uh, from that, you have visibility over all the processes that are running and all the containers, all the kind of stuff. Events are collected at the kernel level with either a, a, <coughs> a kernel module or a BPF probe. And uh, in time, Falco started supporting many more event sourcers. Thank you to the new plugin system, but we'll get back to it later. And then, uh, when an event matches uh, a given security rule, Falco sends you an alert uh, in many different outputs. For example, simple STD out, that's trivial, or uh, HTTP webhook, or gRPC. So it's uh, very easy to make Falco suit your specific use case. So now you pretty much know uh, where we are, but let's also give, give a quick look about Falco's history. Uh, in 2016, Sysdig started developing Falco as an open source project, trying to fill some of the gaps in the cloud security industry. And then later, Falco was donated to the CNCF as, the, as a sandbox level project, uh, you know, looking forward to create a community around it and make the governance truly open. And uh, two years ago, Falco was promoted to, in the CNCF into a, <coughs> an Incubate 11 project, and the community of Falco lovers started to grow uh, even further. Right now, the present day, uh, at least the two of us are pretty uh, proud of how the community is doing so far, and uh, we look forward to see more. So pretty much this is the introduction, so let, let's say we can go to the news part. <laughs> yeah. From this point on, uh, we will cover the most excited achievement of uh, the Falco project during the last year. So let's go with uh, project updates. One of the first notable change was the new release cadence. Until uh, version 0.30, a new Falco version came out every two months or so. Uh, the maintainer of the community, after a very long discussion, I participated in, in that discussion, I remember very well, decided to, decided to switch to just to release per year. It's like uh, Kubernetes that uh, also is giving three release per year. The new release now happened at the precise moments of the year, at the end of the January, May, and September. Of course, we will continue to release or fix some minor patches whenever needed. The new release cycle reflects the current maturity level of Falco. For this reason, we changed the release cadence. Now, users should expect a more stable version of Falco, and also they have a bit more time to up, uh, a bit more time between two releases. 
uh, what's next? Oh, another important uh, feature of Falco uh, is that Falco comes with a robust set of uh, rich, richly extensible default rule set. The community continues to update the default rule set to improve the detection of new security threats. In uh, about one year, we got a lot of new rules, especially in the privilege escalation detection, but also in the container security context. Uh, we could not include all the rule updates uh, in, this, uh, in this slide, so if you want, uh, if you are interested in all the detail, please uh, take a look to, uh, at the Falco change log. And by the way, if you don't find uh, a predefined rule for you, your use case, please tell us or make a PR. We will be happy to work with you. Going next. I'm really proud of the huge work we did renovating our code base and at the same time fixing a ton of bugs. Most of the work we did was done on those software components that we call the libs and drivers. Basically, they are the foundation factor, as you can see in, the, in this diagram. Libs and drivers were originally created by Sistic as a part of another source, another open source project. At the beginning of 2021, the source code was transferred to the Falco Security GitHub organization, and now it's fully owned by the Falco project. Uh, once that happened, we immediately asked ourselves, how can we improve the code? And uh, naturally, the first answer was just to write everything. <laughs> Jokes aside, we did uh, a lot, we spent a lot of effort in, uh, in cleanups because we, uh, we had a lot of legacy code and also in, uh, in trying uh, to find some spot for optimize. Another thing that uh, uh, we really believe that was very important is to make those libraries and drivers consumable by other projects. We spend a lot of time on that, also in uh, refining the API interface. To be honest, there is a lot of work in progress still today, but uh, we were right. Indeed, uh, we are very happy to say that uh, uh, Sysflow, a uh, project from IBM, but also Stackrocks from Red Hat are using our uh, libraries and drivers. Uh, what's also, oh, we also in, increased the, the support and stability, uh, especially we have a, a wider uh, kernel, kernel compatibility, okay, we support more kernel for our BPF prop, sorry, <laughs> and uh, uh, the ARM uh, support is coming very soon. Other improvements, uh, one, perhaps one of the most uh, other feature, we other uh, stuff we implemented the last year are security fix. In particular, two, uh, to address the two CVs discovered during the last year. If you are curious about uh, that, uh, the CVs or in general all, uh, all security stuff that uh, we continue to uh, address, you can take a look to our security advisor. That you can find all the link in the in the deck. Uh, we also increased the, the syscall support. We added some missing security critical uh, syscall, like for example, user port FD and uh, uh, exec VAAT that uh, were, uh, were needed to, to address the, 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 the CP. Okay, now it's time to talk about the most exciting feature that Falco recently got, the new plugin system. The plugin system is the result of uh, about one year of work. We could guess that uh, the plugin system is uh, a way to extend the capability of Falco, but uh, is also for, for us is also a, a standard way uh, for new feature and integration uh, to add in Falco. And uh, indeed it is, but uh, plugins also um, a way to extend the applicability of the Falco philosophy to an endless number of new domains. Okay, so let's get to it. 
At this point, the plugin system was mentioned a couple of times already, but we only scratched the surface. So uh, given the fact that this is one of the most game-changing features that we introduced over the past year, we thought it was good to have a dedicated section just for it in this presentation. So plugins are little modules that can extend the functionality of Falco, basically, and they can be loaded at runtime in the form of dynamic share libraries which also means that you can develop them in basically any language as long as you are able to comply with a very simple and little C API. And then plugins fit inside Falco libraries and can extend one or more of their capabilities. We really tried our best to keep the learning curve as simple as possible uh, to allow everyone to get involved with a little effort, uh, especially even and especially those that are, are new for the project. And uh, finally, plugins are developed and uh, compiled, distributed uh, outside of the Falco code base, which, is, which also means that everyone can have their own plugin and uh, you know, the effort can be really community driven because it's easy for people to create their own extension, share it, and it's also easier for adopters to adapt Falco to their specific use cases. One of the things that, for example, a plugin can do is providing a new event source to Falco. Again, Falco historically only supported system events coming from the kernel. And then in time, we had additional, uh, an additional support for another event source, which was uh, Kubernetes audit log. Uh, so the next logical step uh, was for the plugin system to standardize this and create a unified, a coherent way for people to develop new event sources for Falco. Uh, events coming from new sources are processed by the Falco engine just like system events, and then they can be matched against security rules, just like before. Um, and uh, you can also extract more data uh, for those roles, which I'm going to cover later. And uh, here, for example, a good, um, a good instance of this is the AWS CloudTrail plugin, which basically allows you to connect uh, Falco to your AWS infrastructure, grab and read all the audit logs, and basically makes you able to discover at runtime if something bad is about, you know, happened, like for instance, if someone logs in without multi-factor authentication of, or if a sensitive file or an S3 bucket gets touched. Then Falco, again, extracts data from those events. Guess what? Plugins can extend this functionality too. Um, this basically allows plugin developers to define new fields for the event sources supported by Falco, which can then be used to write new security rules. A good example for this, like you see on the right, is again the CloudTrail plugin. Uh, as you can see here, we use totally new uh, fields in the rules, like just, for example, identity type to detect the, uh, the unsafe login. And then those same new fields introduced by the plugins, just like before with security, with system events, can then be used to uh, create outputs to send uh, along with the alerts on the Falco output framework. Sounds cool. Uh, you may wonder how do I start, how to get involved with this. Uh, we did our best to provide SDK packages so that contributors could get, get up to speed without thinking too much about all the technical details. We got something in the workings for C++, for example, but we got something fully functional for Go. We have a Go SDK with which you can write plugins for Falco. Out of the box, it works. We personally like Go, and it is uh, a much-loved language in the cloud-native community. Uh, so that's why this Go was one of the first languages which we gave priority uh, to support with, uh, with an SDK. Another reason is that writing simple and yet performant code uh, between C and Go is not an easy task. So we thought, I mean, reasonably, we thought that creating something built out of the box for the community was a good thing. Um, plus, many, I mean, we, we expect uh, many other uh, community supported SDK for other languages are about to come in the future too. So please stay tuned for this. This is a pretty uh, simple overview of what you can expect your developer experience to look like with the, uh, with the Go SDK. We really try to keep things as simple as possible. Um, so developing a plugin is just a matter here of defining a new type and make it like uh, implement an interface with few methods. The SDK takes care of uh, implementing all and satisfying all the plugin API requirements, so you don't have to think about it. Um, so once you're happy with your work and you have your Go code, you can just compile it to a C share library and uh, hook it into Falco. Uh, plugins are part of the Falco configuration, which is kind of like in the YAML file you see on the left. Uh, so basically, it's pretty easy to just set it up and configure it like you uh, like, like you like. 
Here, instead, you can see some Go interfaces for implementing either the event sourcing or the field extraction capabilities that I uh, showed before. Uh, the Go SDK defines the core interfaces in totally separate packages so that you can just import the ones you need and uh, compone uh, your plugin uh, with, with the feature you want to extend in the system. Uh, you can also see how those two features specifically relate in the Falco execution flow. Now, there's no time to go uh, deep into this, maybe in the Q&A session if you really want, but it's, uh, it's worth mentioning that the Go SDK heavily optimizes these two uh, specific code paths because they are executed many times per second and we had to reduce the Seago uh, overhead as much as possible. Oh, yeah. Uh, the plugin framework is the SDK, SDK are, um, are a lot of stuff, uh, but uh, we went further. At some point during the development, we realized that uh, we needed to respect some uh, technical constraint. For example, uh, plugins capable of sourcing events needed uh, an unique ID, a unique ID to be assigned. We also needed a way to coordinate plugins out, author because, uh, for example, they have to choose the name of the new data source. Okay, so the all, all name of the other source uh, must uh, not uh, conflict. Uh, and then we decided at this point to create a record of plugin officially acknowledged by the community. That basically is our plugin registry that also hosts some plugins and uh, which also helps the developer to share and promote their plugin. And it was a success. Indeed, the, the ecosystem uh, is growing fast. In just about three months, uh, we got a lot of plugins. We have, of course, uh, the first plugin actually is the, uh, the porting of the data source that was already present in Falco, Kubernetes Audit Log. We ported it as a, a plugin. And uh, uh, the other one is uh, Amazon Cloud, Cloud Trail that was uh, uh, the first plugin uh, implemented. A plugin that uh, grabs Docker event, another plugin that works with the second, second pageant, and uh, uh, another plugin to create a rule on the event, uh, on, on the Octa event. Uh, there are already other pull requests open and with the new plugin that are, are coming, but uh, we are looking forward to seeing uh, your plugins. We are waiting for you. If, and by the way, <laughs> if you need any help with that, or to get to know more about the plugin developer, please reach out. We'll be, we will be happy to help always. Okay, so far we have talked about plug infinity, but uh, what's beyond that? Let's find out some development that are in progress. Immediately after we implemented the plugins, uh, that which, uh, which also needed a dedicated rule set, because you know, each plugin has each set of rules that are dedicated for that data source. We recognized that, uh, uh, that we needed, uh, we need to distributing, distrib to distribute the plugin's artifact, but also the rules files. So we made a plan. Basically, we are going to develop a tool for downloading and installing plugins and rules in a Falco deployment, or, or if you have Falco installed on the host. Uh, but also, we wanted the ability to automatically get updates, especially about rules. Imagine that you have our rules uh, installed yesterday, but a new CV come out, the rules get updated, and you can receive automatically the updates. Uh, since we already had a tool, called the Falco Couple, that's unfortunately it's a bit abandoned at the moment. Our plan is just to resurrect it and provide, and provide those future uh, those uh, features through it. Oh, another maybe more important effort going on uh, is the renovation. Of, I know it's not uh, actual renovation; it's a new BPF probe. Basically, in the last months uh, there were a lot of discussion about the modern modernization of our BPF probe. Uh, all those discussions made by the community converged to a proposal that's currently in development. The most relevant aspect of this proposal are the uh, compiled ones, run everywhere support, the use of the native uh, BPF ring buffer. Uh, also, we are trying to reduce 
the usage of the BPF helpers and the and we will add the native uh, multi-act su uh, support. Uh, for, of course, for time constraint, we can't cover all the detail here, but you can find out all the detail in the proposal. The link are in the slide, and also I believe the author of the proposal is in this room. So if you want to ask, <laughs> screen, I, I will say later who is. Okay. We are uh, reaching uh, uh, almost the end of this talk, but before we leave, we would like to say that you can find us uh, in our awesome community. We will be we will be very happy to meet you. The Falco channel in the Kubernetes Slack is where all the conversation in the community happens. So please feel free to join and say hi. I can assure you, everyone is very welcoming and nice. Plus, we meet each other every Wednesday for the community call, and that's also where we discuss all the current developments and requirements. Um, if you really want to stay tuned, you can also subscribe to the mailing list. We write basically whatever happens, like every new release or uh, when the community call time changes, which happens with you know different time zones and stuff. So before. Jumping to the Q&A session, uh, we, ju we just wanted to remind you that you can download this presentation, you can find the, the link on sked.com, and there's actually some value because we realized we couldn't fill all the slides with the QR codes, and we placed links uh, all around the place, so you can find easy pointers for many of the concepts that we thought about there. Um, yeah, so thank you for attending, I really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you. Any questions at this point? <laughs> no, you, you went through a bit about the, the binary format and the plugin system. Is there any ideas of things, for example? Oh, sorry. Hello? Is it on? Oh, there we go. Yep. Uh, so you went through the discussions of like the plugin system and building binaries like DLLs or, um, yeah. Uh, is there any idea of adding support, for example, to WASM? Currently not, but maybe it's something interest, interesting to look at that. Currently, basically, it's just a shared library. There are a set of uh, C symbols that uh, the, the plugin has to export. It's just that at the moment. And uh, Falco Dynamics load uh, the, do, the .sh file. That's it. But uh, it would be very interesting to, to look at that. Good idea. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything coming from the virtual, from, from the Slack group, from the Slack channel? Okay. Anyone else? Well, I think we can uh, we can close this then. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks so much. Yeah.